Hi, this is Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook, and today I'm here to talk about what is a CNC simulator. Um, we make a product called GWizard Editor that is a CNC simulator, uh, but there are many others available out there, and this video and uh, talk is all about what they can do for you and why you might want to have one in your arsenal of CNC tools. This diagram basically shows you what, what the simulator is. You load your G-code into this piece of software and it provides you with a simulated CNC controller. Moreover, that controller uh, is subject to a post that tells it exactly which G-code dialect it should be simulating for you. So if your machine is a particular uh, controller, or maybe a Siemens or a Fagor or Fanuc, whatever it may, might be, Mach 3, uh, Linux CNC, they all have different G-code dialects and they all respond a little bit differently. And so your simulator needs to be able to account for those differences uh, when it's telling you what your program is going to do. Now given the G-code in, you get a variety of different uh, results from a CNC simulator that, that help you uh, with the G-code. You get a backplot that shows you graphically uh, uh, what the toolpath looks like. Uh, you may also, for some simulators, get a full 3D simulation that shows the uh, the cutter going into the material and its life size, it shows the material being removed, uh, it can show you if provided you have all the solid models for everything, uh, uh, what your fixtures, your vices, your clamps look like, whether the cutter is going to collide with one of those. Uh, they can get into almost infinite detail in simulating what's going to happen when you run your program. I've even seen uh, simulators that are so sophisticated that they would predict various kinds of surface finish problems uh, based on on the particular tool paths you're using and things of that nature. Uh, they give you the ability to single step. I've shown the uh, little transport cluster here that comes uh, in, in GWizard uh, Editor, uh, but basically this lets you run the program uh, as slowly or as quickly as you like to get to the area where you're uh, interested in. Perhaps there's a problem there, perhaps you're trying to make some area faster or better, or maybe you're just trying to understand what the heck it does. Uh, you've inherited this program perhaps, or it's been too long since you worked on it. Uh, single Step gives you the ability to go and run that software, uh, run that G-code program as slowly as you like to help you understand what's going on. They give you error checking. Uh, not in every case. A lot of a lot of the simulators out there will just throw a back plot up and not tell you much about any errors in the G code. But for example, uh, uh, the very best uh, simulators track down all kinds of things that would be a problem for you. In this case, I'm showing as a little example. Uh, uh, G Wizard Editor has spotted that you're attempting to make a uh, a feed rate motion here without having uh, started your spindle going. Well, you know, if you're, if you're running a machine that where the spindle isn't even controlled by the uh, CNC controller, maybe that's no problem and you're, you're going to turn it on manually and you want to suppress that error message. But if you're running most CNC machines, you, you probably have a mistake here and you need to make sure that spindle is running or you're going to break the cutter and have a crash before you go into the material at a, at a uh, feed rate speed. Uh, simulators can give you all sorts of information, uh, whether that's detail information, which is really what I pictured here about exactly uh, which modes are active and what's going on step by step as you execute the program, uh, or, what, or whether that's more global information. For example, GWizard Editor can tell you how far each tool travels uh, at cutting speeds, as well as how long in minutes. Uh, that tool is in use. Gathering that kind of information can really help you estimate, for example, how many parts you might be able to make given the expected life of that tool before you need to change tools. Uh, that kind of information can help you do quotations and estimates on uh, what it costs you or what to charge for that particular operation. So there's all kinds of good 
information that comes out of a CNC simulator. Um, so you're, you're probably starting to get an idea of why people use CNC simulators, but I want to just run through some of the, the main reasons why people do. Uh, probably the number one reason is they want to get a quick sanity check on their CAM software. A lot of shops and manufacturing facilities require that before any part program can be put on a machine and executed, somebody needs to look at it in the simulator. And there's a lot of reasons for this, and a lot of people ask, well, gee, my, my CAM software has a simulator. Uh, why isn't that good enough? Why do I need a separate simulator? And the answer is that what the CAM software has is not really a G-code simulator. What they're doing uh, is more of a simulation based off the same geometry that was used by the toolpaths. Uh, and so if there are errors in that geometry, uh, the CAM simula simulation may look fine. Uh, that geometry is upstream of whatever goes on in the post-processor. So any errors in converting that geometry to G-code uh, may also look okay in the CAM simulator. Uh, the bottom line is you don't really have a simulated controller in most CAM packages. Uh, you have uh, a sort of an interesting representation of the geometry that's kind of time-lapse and it's helpful in, in, in getting to know what the toolpath is going to do, but it's really not very helpful at all in terms of catching the errors. And so you need a simulator uh, to keep up with those errors. Number two, they can help you debug a post. I was just talking to a machinist friend the other day that says, hey, Bob, uh, I needed to modify a post. In, uh, in this case, it was uh, uh, the HSM Works component of Fusion 360. Uh, in order to make it work better for his machine. And he was uh, using GWizard Editor to look at the G-code output of the post uh, in, order to st in order to figure out how to tweak that post uh, so that it would more optimally work with his machine's controller. Uh, so, you know, posts can sometimes be a bit of a black art, but they're a lot less scary when you have a good simulator there to check the results and see exactly what's happening with the G-code. Saving time at the machine is a huge reason to use a simulator. Most most shops view that machine time is money. They want to keep the spindle spinning as much of the time as possible. And so being able to use a simulator to find the problems before you actually get to the machine uh, is very helpful. Uh, shops that uh, have invested heavily in simulators often find that their scrap rates go way down. Uh, they may be able to reduce, uh, minimize, or even completely eliminate the need to slowly air cut uh, the entire program before they can run it. That's really important, by the way, if your shop isn't going to be va making very many of each individual part. I mean, if you've got to, uh, you know, turn the, f turn the feed rate way down and, and uh, uh, cut air before you ever ever can run the program, you're, you're effectively going to multiply your run times by two or three times before you're actually going to get a part off the table. And so it's all about keeping the spindles running uh, while you're off on the side making sure the program is really ready to go with a simulator. There are those times when you handwrite G-code. Even um, the most dedicated uh, CAM users will find that it's pretty easy to improve the G-code, and sooner or later, if you're at it long enough, you're going to want to do that. Um, you know, maybe you're going to use some macros, some subprograms, or some parameterized programming uh, to fine-tune your CAM-generated code and do something that the CAM won't let you do. Uh, maybe you're going to handwrite some code. Uh, just because it's easy to do, maybe for a, a simple lathe part and you don't want to go through the trouble of the CAM. Uh, maybe you just want to get in and tune up your code to understand, you know, how do I speed this up or, or make it faster? Uh, the thing is, being able to write the G code and modify it is a lot less scary if you've got a good simulator in your toolbox. What about those who are learning G code? Uh, we get a lot of customers for uh, GWizard Editor from the vocational schools and other programs where they're trying to teach G-Code. Let's face it, G-Code is, is both ancient and cryptic. 
Uh, it was invented long ago. It hasn't gotten much easier to read over time. And even a G-code expert needs to look various things up that they don't use all the time. You know, maybe what are the exact parameters for this this can cycle I haven't used in a while, uh, and, and those kinds of questions. Uh, and so, you know, the way I look at it is, what if you had an expert right there at your elbow, uh, giving you lots of extra information to help you understand your G-code? That would just make it so much easier to learn G-code and understand what's what's going on with it. And that's another role that a good simulator has. Um, so those are five reasons to use a simulator as well as an introduction to what sorts of things they could do. You should check out a CNC simulator if you haven't already. Uh, as I mentioned, CNC Cookbook has a nice one called GWizard Editor. There are other ones on the market too, and, and having almost any of them uh, is much better than not having a simulator at all. Thanks!